The 2022 midterm election is just 19 days away, but former Vice President Mike Pence's response about 2024 is what it has Washington, D.C. buzzing tonight. Take a listen. If Donald Trump is the Republican nominee for president in 2024, will you vote for him? Well, there might be somebody else I'd prefer more. Vice President Pence talking obliquely, perhaps modestly, about himself running for president. I, I still have to say I find his restraint a thing to behold, given the whole hang Mike Pence thing, which we've now learned Trump was saying privately that maybe the mob had a point. In any case, 2024 is on. Let's talk about this and much, much more, including some of the issues that will be important in 2024. Former governor of Florida and former Republican presidential candidate uh, Jeb Bush. Governor, so good to see you again. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I know you want to talk about education. I'll get there in one sec. But Vice President Pence, he seems to think there's room for a traditional, dare I say, sane Republican in the 2024 race for president. And that's who you tried to be in the 2016 uh, presidential election. Um, do you think there's room? Would the Republican base look to someone other than Donald Trump? I think so, yeah. I think uh, uh, Vice President Pence uh, will make his case to uh, primary voters. My guess is he's running. I don't know that for a fact, but he's certainly well qualified to do it. He's earned that position, as have others. And um, my guess is, I don't know this for a fact, I'm not a, I'm not a great pundit on these matters, but my guess is that there'll be a yearning for, uh, A, a new generation of leadership in our country in 2024, and B, candidates that are focused on the future, not necessarily uh, the grievances of the past. So um, whether or not the former president runs or not, I have no clue, but he'll be formidable. But there'll be other candidates that uh, will will uh, be able to make their case for sure. The current Florida governor, Ron DeSantis, uh, is in that new generation. He will be the first Gen X president. He's a rising star in the Republican Party in Florida and nationwide. He seems to also be signaling he might run for president. Would you support him if he ran? I, well, I'm, I'm not going to get involved in a primary, but I, uh, uh, you know, before we even get to the uh, end of this election cycle, but I can tell you he's, he's done a great job as governor. He's governed very effectively. Uh, his response to the pandemic, I think, was uh, extraordinarily good. His education policies are solid. He's made a real commitment to protecting the water resources and the natural environment of our state. Um, he's, you know, kept the legislature in line. Uh, he's done the things that, uh, that I admire as, as governor. And he also has a strong appeal outside the state because he's tackled these cultural issues that have a pretty broad appeal in the Republican um, mindset right now. So let's, let's talk about some of the issues you just raised with, with uh, regarding Governor DeSantis, education uh, and COVID, because the la latest national assessment of educational progress, uh, often called the nation's report card, showed Student test scores plummeted in math and reading after the pandemic to, to levels we haven't seen in decades. Um, that dramatic drop is attributed in large part to the pandemic where schools were shut down, learning went virtual um, because of various policies, uh, the fear of kids getting sick, fear of teachers getting sick. Um, what are your thoughts on this? How long will it take to get our kids back on track? Well, if we put the proper resources behind new policies and we actually faithfully implement the policies that we know work, we can uh, overcome these big learning gaps, particularly with low-income kids. Jake, this is, this is uh, we've always had this challenge uh, in our country of, of, of uh, lower-income kids struggling with uh, education outcomes compared to more affluent students. And it's gotten worse, and the NAEP results that will come out on Monday will probably show really awful, an awful, awful situation. So what should we do? Empower parents to make choices uh, for their kids. Give them the power to choose public and private options, as, as is, exists in Florida, Arizona, and other places. Give them transparency to know where their, where their kids stand. Most parents think their kids are all doing fantastic, but the reality is the NAEP scores will show, I think, that the the number of kids that are proficient are, are way too low. I have to say, I'm surprised that there hasn't been a national conversation about the damage done to kids because of these school closures and the virtual learning and everything. Because, I mean, I'm not saying it, there should be a national do-over, but 
we can't just pretend that fifth graders who are now seventh graders, that that didn't happen. You know, and like I feel like there should be, and not, not with a blame game. Look, it happened. People did it. It was criticized, the school closures, the virtual learning, et cetera. But here we are. Um, there needs to be yeah, like, a, I mean, like a bipartisan movement, you know? I, no, I agree. And I think, I think what happens in Washington, uh, and it seems like our, our policy and our politics is all D.C. focused, what happens is that everything gets hyper-politicized. Um, and so, you know, schools opening or not becomes a political issue rather than um, recognizing, you know, mistakes may have been made. It was a really difficult time. But let's try to solve problems now. And um, there is a bipartisan consensus outside of Washington of what needs to be done. Democratic governors and, and Republican governors alike, uh, many of them are abandoning the whole language notion for reading and focusing on the science of reading. Uh, and there's a lot of efforts uh, to use this the money, not all the COVID money has you know, been spent, to be able to develop strategies to uh, empower parents to make more choices about how do you overcome these big gaps in the, in the learning loss that took place. But to ignore it, we do it at our peril because Imagine uh, if you're if you're in fourth grade right now and you've had two years where you haven't there hasn't been an assessment there hasn't been any diagnostic work done uh, and you're starting to have to do science and social mm -hmm. studies and math and you can't read how the heck is that child going to be able to progress and those yeah. learning losses will grow and grow and grow I mean who's marching in the streets for these kids who's yeah. who's expressing outrage and that's that's what um, I hope the NAEP results, uh, because I'm pretty sure they're going to be ugly, I hope that they uh, end up being a catalyst to do a lot more than what we're doing today. Yeah, I've said it a million times, the adults of this country are, have been failing the children of this country. I want to ask you, because you talked about Governor DeSantis uh, taking on cultural issues that have appeal uh, in the Republican Party beyond just Florida. Florida has a new law in effect that, that also impacts kids' education in school. It's called the Individual Freedom Measure. It's commonly referred to as the Stop Woke Act. Uh, it prohibits teaching that one ethnic group is inherently racist and should feel guilty for past actions committed by others. Your mission as a governor in Florida was to improve the education system. Um, I don't know exactly how these rules are being enforced, but do you have any concern that these restrictions could have a chilling effect on teachers just having honest conversations about civil rights or slavery or, or, or anything else? Well, I think there's there's a there's certainly a middle ground on this. I don't I don't think it has been implemented. I don't know what the enforceability is. Uh, I do know that Governor DeSantis has uh, expanded parental choice, has uh, uh, put put a lot of money in the budget for uh, literacy based uh, efforts, and that's where I you know I support him. These cultural issues uh, generate uh, enormous amount of interest because there there are problems for sure, um, but. Some of this is making a political point to push back against um, wokeness in general, and um, you know how it's how it's implemented. We'll see. All right, former Governor Jeb Bush, always good to have you on. Please don't be a stranger. Come back. We want to talk more about education, and you're a good person to, with whom to do it. So thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Jake.